Hello, and thank you for joining the Tuesday edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayo Dili Uzubakun. Today on the program, Edo government disbanded media team of Deputy Governor Philip Schreiber has filled with Governor Obaseki Watsons. I'll be hanging out with Olayinka Oyegbili and Dari Utu for work on. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for staying with us. It's economic crunch time in Nigeria and belt tightens and measures are expected. Now, President Bola Tinubu has directed the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to stop the processing of visas to government officials seeking to travel to New York for the United Nations General Assembly without proof of direct participation in activities according to the president's spokes presidential spokesman Ajurari Ingilali. The move is part of efforts to reduce the cost of governance in the country. The president also affirmed that henceforth government officials and expenditure must reflect prudence and sacrifice being made by well many Nigerians. Inga, this should be who are those people meant to attend the United Nations General Assembly with Mr. President? Well, I know that the list is usually not made uh, available for the general public. But when you look at it, it's one, the president, some of his close aides who have link with international community. I mean, whose portfolio has something to do with international community. Yes. You won't expect, a, exactly, you won't expect like uh, maybe a minister of uh, agriculture or maybe a uh, ministry, minister of works and so on to be on the list, except the president has a specific reason to say, okay, I need this man to go along with me. Apart from that, you also know that many of the people who go on this kind of trips are usually not people that we even get to the venue. In 2011, I was opportune to be invited by United Nations Agency to cover the event. And I was, I was there with some other journalists. You won't believe that. The Nigerian delegation that year was very large as usual, but majority of these people did not even get to the United Nations Center. They were busy shopping around, moving around, looking at uh, skyscraper building in New York and all that. All that at the cost or at the expense of the government. So it is a good thing that the president has done this. But I just hope that it is not just a, a let, let, let us tell them kind of thing. It must be really acted upon because... You, you, you have a, a UN assembly where serious issues are discussed. Various um, committees are set up and people are talking about how to make their nation better. And then you have Nigerians going there. In fact, you will be so embarrassed sometimes. Some of those, the few who will likely get to the center, you see them carrying bags, shopping bags. I mean... And you begin to wonder, what is it that these people have come to do in this place? Who allowed them to come? If they go with their own money and at their own cost and all that, it is all okay. But what happens is that it is an opportunity for people to go with their friends, their girlfriends, their whatever, and so on. Oh, okay, there is somebody you have been trying to help all this while, and this opportunity came and said, oh, Oh boy, do you have a passport? Oh, bring it, bring it. We are going to the UN. And then it becomes a UN delegation without having anything whatsoever to do at the venue. Some will, in fact, some will not even get to that center to even see the place that, oh, okay, I was there, or I, I've taken, no, they won't get there. 
they will not do anything is either they are sleeping in their rooms or moving around New York City, gawking and looking at skyscrapers. For what? At the cost, at uh, the expense of Nigeria? So the president has done very, very well in this. But I hope it is not just for the optics. optics. Barry, some of us have covered hunger, and we know that it's always a very good time for, you know, especially the venue, New York City. It's where people decide to go on tourism, do so many other things. Some governors will take their aids, pick their people. So now, what Balatino is saying that, look, we must pull this down, and this is not an opportunity for another, yet another jamboree. Yeah, well, what the president is doing has nothing to do with uh, those who want to go on sightseeing and to uh, New York <laughs> during the... Uh, uh, UN uh, event. What he's simply saying is that don't go with our money. Don't go with our logistics. Mm -hmm. Beyond the money, at times like this, our forex is challenged. So, but if you want to go on your own, you source what you need on your own, the, the road is open. But it should not be the usual practice of opportunity for the boys. Mm -hmm. Patronage for our people. I have seen a situation whereby a speaker of a state assembly went to the uh, UNGA with as much as eight people, while he himself this, has nothing this, directly this, doing. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he is not even participating in any of the sidelines. You know, <laughs> of course, there are, the UNGA, yeah. there are sidelines. He is not. This speaker himself is not participating in any of the sideline events. Not to talk of the main events. He has no role directly, as Mr. Spender put it now, to, to play. Yet, he, did, he didn't just find Himself his own there. way. He went with Eight. 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 <laughs> That's one state. You <laughs> find things like that happening in maybe one third of our 36 states. That's at the state level. Then you begin to look at what is happening in the presidency, what is happening at the federal government level. The ministries... You see, it's, it's, it has become some sort of culture that when we have this kind of uh, program, at least we should have 200 and something daily, uh, the member delegation, 300 and something, and we must find ways of filling the figures. So much so that, like uh, uh, we were just told, people call for passports. Do you, do you have a passport? Bring it. Let's get you a visa so that I can be part of this delegation. It is also a way to people. In fact, that in fact, some people Pardieu. just go. Let me tell you how funny this arrangement is. Some of these people in the delegation, they go. They don't collect the entitlements. Some other people pocket the yeah. entitlement. Your own is make appearance so that we can claim this money. And, and then you then also we... want to use your passport, you want to use a visa, or you want to have the opportunity of sightseeing, you will go. So the moment they know that that slot is taken, Somebody is some dollars richer. That, those are the kind of things. And these are the things we had up to talk about high cost of governance in this country. Things we can actually do without. And that's why when you come from that background and you look at what Mr. President is saying, I believe very strongly that this is not for the optics. And why? You ask me why? Because he made it public. He could have issued... Uh, a, a, what the, uh, a memo. A memo, silently, but making it public, asking that it should be publicized, is telling you that when we have another event, this same practice will subsist. It is, it, the, the jamboree, we, we've done enough of it, and we can actually, Ayo, we can actually do without it. Let's have a sizable delegation of people who have business being in the yeah. United States of America at that time. And then the, 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 the handlers of the delegation will be able to pin everybody down one event or the other. So it, it, we have heard there's people who get in there, and all they do is to go shopping. And they'll be checking the day and time when it's time to go back to Nigeria. And then everybody's back home again at the expense of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And then we begin to ask individuals and the team, what have we achieved? At what cost? 
What we do is pay. So, is it everybody that has to talk to the investors? <laughs> I, I, so you mean all of us must leave this country to go and talk to investors before they Some come? Some of up? the delegates will not even know, know an investor when he's sitting <laughs> with them. When, <laughs> you, that, that's how bad it gets. But everybody will find themselves in New York, spend time, spend money, spend resources, claim dividends. Pardon. And In then, fact, that's the, the, the most annoying aspect of it. Yes. It is that per diem. As he said, you will have some people who are the contractors. Yes. For instance, if I'm a legitimate delegate and I bring you in, if the uh, per diem is, uh, is, is usually one week, if it is about, uh, let's say, I don't know how much it is, but let's say it is um, $5,000 or whatever for those days, I might say, oh boy, you only get two. Me, I'll take three. Uh -huh. I mean, it's free money. Free money. You give me oh, free ride. Free ride, food free enjoyment. People will really, top, really top. agree. And so, then Nigeria will be the, is, is the loser. And you start to visa. Exactly. Yes. And then you go sightseeing. Exactly. So I think it's a good thing that okay. the president has done. Mm. All right. These are desperate times in Nigeria, and desperate acts will be rife. A private warehouse in Yenugua, used by the Bayosa state government to store food items and other materials, was invaded by some residents who carted away mm -hmm. items like bags of rice and gari, as well as cartons of noodles and bottled water. The items were said to be part of the relief materials donated by some concerned Nigerians during the 2022 flood disaster in the states, but the state emergency management agency said the food items are remnant being gathered for disposal as they no longer fit for human consumption. What do we believe? What mm. do we believe here? Because it is wicked if the flood, flood 2022 flooding, if that has come and gone and we still have this food in the warehouse, and these guys are saying, no, the remnants to be destroyed. And some people feel that whether there are expired noodles, expired anything, we will need it for survival. You see, the first question we should ask the agency that issued this statement is, mm. that's almost a year ago, because we are preparing for another flood. Yes, yes. Why, for God's sake, in a country where people are hungry, we have motherless babies home. We have all those things. Why can't we have prisons, we, uh, correctional centers, and all that? When you have this remaining store, store why those didn't those. you distribute it or nice. take Maybe? it to Cut those to centers? Those. Now, you, are, you have a lot. If we, even if we are to believe them that they are no longer good. Guys... So everything expired at the same time. Uh, there is even a saying that you, sh you don't throw away food. Because, I mean, there are people who are hungry. A lot of people are hungry. So why didn't you wake up before this time, before it got to the expiry date, and say, okay, let's take it to rem uh, remand homes or uh, correctional centers and so on. We have people all around the city. You have beggars everywhere. Why don't you give it to them? Why did you allow it? We cared of it. So, as, honestly, we cared if of I were to be the governor no. or the person no. that has the power to punish, the agency chairman or the head of this agency must answer for it. Mm. If you make people pay for their uh, negligence, Sorry. it will not happen again. Mm. Because as of have, the time you had, ordered it to sell. Exactly. As of the time you had this food there, ordered it to and you know that this thing is getting to expiry point, you tell your governor or whoever is in charge that, ah, sir, these things will soon expire. Can we distribute it to people? People will be happy. Now we are saying that everybody is hungry, there is no food, there is no... Sure and now. then you now want to go and throw this one away to where? Said Why? They, they said they are no longer fit for consumption. They are no fit for women consumption. Yeah. Why did you allow it to stay in the warehouse? There, 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 is no, there is no way I will believe that story. There is no way you have remnant of food anywhere in Nigeria. 
You don't know what the meaning of remnant. Yes. What? How, 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 how will you define remnant? Mm -hmm. We are fed people, and they are overfed, exactly. and they didn't need any Anything more food. Again. That's the only way you can define remnant. So in Bayelsa, that flood-prone area, mm -hmm. after the disaster, they were moved to uh, camps. Some of them were staying in the creeks. They could no longer farm nor fish. And then you fed them with so much food, they so much so that they said, look, we, we have, have enough. We have enough. We do not need any more food. Lion. And then you looked at the warehouse, mm. and like it happened after you fed, uh, Jesus fed people with five fishes. Yes. And, and they, they, they said, gather the remaining. And you gathered the remaining. You kept them in a warehouse for one year. And nobody came begging for food that you could have given. There was no other disaster that could have used the same thing. There were no people who were obviously hungry. There were school children who were being fed with uh, uh, this uh, feeding, school feeding. Yeah. During this period, school them. feeding stopped. Federal <laughs> government school feeding was suspended. Mm. Also in this same Bayesa state. The government could have said, okay, while we are waiting for federal government to resume, mm. use yeah, this one exactly. to feed our children. That did not happen. But there were remnants in your bands. You see, no, when you begin to call on the governor to punish people, we are exonerating the governor. I won't exonerate the governor. I would not. The culture I of we are house food no, the, the culture of not taking the people, the masses serious, is one of the bane's of the uh, of this country. That is the pro that is. If why, you take your people serious, where we are. then recently something happened. There were an increase in fair price. People are talking about palliatives. You had those things there. Uh, exactly. At the time, everybody was talking. The, the language. Since the word, May. Palliatives since May. Since May. Since May. This is August. You had this thing there. And now, when it was, uh, the, the place was attacked, and hungry people went for what rightfully somebody, belongs somebody to them. You say it's, 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 it's expired. information. Okay. Yes. See, you, hungry people are like uh, DSS officials. Mm. They can sniff food. They can ferret food out anywhere. food anywhere. They can sniff food anywhere. Now that they have laid their hands on it, you are telling them, don't eat it. Oh. It's don't bother about the expiration. The they, they will find out in their stomachs. <laughs> you see, you see you know, these, these things are painful. Very wicked. See, they want to tell the people, why did you go the there? Official. That's stealing. I Somebody wrote on Facebook, he said, that's stealing. I didn't respond because if you look at it literally, it may be stealing. But realistically, mm. when we become really, mm. if we face reality, can we accuse these people of stealing? If, 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 they, if they went there to take it to eat, I honestly will not be able to categorize it as stealing. stealing. It is only if they go there and, and they, want then they want to sell. Because but with I what mean, we saw, we, we are in a situation where... See, all these things that we, are, we come here and talk every day is like some people just li don't listen or they listen and watch and say, you are just saying your own. We know what we are going to do. Why will a government official have this kind of... And you know what caused it? They, they said the agency visited the place. And open the place, and then people saw that yeah, yeah. oh, there's taking... something exactly inside there, and that was when they went back. Yes. But the question, 2022, that's a year ago, mm. because it's about this time last year that that that, that, that flood uh, happened. That, that was July. So you now keep it up from that time up to this moment. If they didn't loot it, we wouldn't have. We wouldn't would have, have known. No, no, they would have connived together. Exactly. They would have sold it. So they, they, they would have even think that it. the thing is in a private warehouse. You see, no, no, you, no, you, no. You, you warehouse this we are very away from place. where some go, even some government officials would be aware of its existence. Mm. Now the people who need it have gone for it. I think nobody should cry over uh, uh, what has happened. The mm. government should. Be prepared. I think should it be true that these things are expired products? The government should be prepared to take care of the people. Mm. The government yeah, should just be prepared. Nice. And the action shows the level of poverty. If this is Bayesa, Bayesa State is one of the least populated um, states yes. in the country. Yes. So if this is Bayesa, just imagine what will happen to if this gets to Alimosho in Lagos. Oh. Uh,
Just tell me <laughs> this is there to mile two of Lagos. Now you see the and the level of poverty <sighs> ravaging the country right it's, now. It's very, it's it's very, very unfortunate. People are hungry. No, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are not. We are not being realistic. You see expired rice yeah. outside, and but it's are talking about expired. expired. What rice? What is expired in this thing that you are talking about? Is it that when they cook it, it will not be cooked? <laughs> you know, get cooked. <laughs> see. The truth of the matter is that the governor must not allow this to just go like that. Honestly, he must. Well, people should those must, who must pay for exactly, this. Exactly, they must pay for it. Must, because why did you keep it for this long? The reason why there are wicked people. things like this and happen is true. people ah. get away with it say easily. It's, say it's left over. It's mm. Nigeria. That there was demonstrating something. Left over from where? where? Was the last one of the rice. <laughs> Who decided the expired it? Ayo, I'm not interested in expired. I'm saying that rice should not have remained. At all. If there was the sincere intention to share it, it, it should not have been enough. Uh, exactly. So Can you say it's left over? For them to now say that it the remained. It, Remnants. I think this ah. challenging governor do you duty to look into this uh, and those uh, you see, officers. Ah, but it. even when you talk of expiry date now. That rice has only stayed in that warehouse for one year, I want to believe. Yes. So that means that when it, it was for years, that, that means when it was already, it, it was, was almost expired. expired. It was almost yeah. expired. I mean, so they, they can, they can, there they are a lot of questions that yeah, we, they, they need to it's answer. So, it's, it's unfortunate that the rice by now will be in people's stomach. We'll have been able to identify whether it is expired or not. How do you, you know those? Can only be how do, you, how do you <laughs> even <Boys? have> to... <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's no it's it's even it's even more serious to say that the time we are in in Nigeria and somebody's wearing house we're housing food. 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 No, honestly, this is not at the a time when we should be look at this that's why right. you see uh, let me let me that. share this. Some it may be small, mm. but some efforts, mm. some uh, attempt by certain people mm. to make life easy for people at a time like this, we must identify it. I think it is the uh, chairman of uh, Orili Agege local government mm. who bought food and sold it half the price. Half the price, yeah, I heard about that. For people. I, I saw it's this, all, um, I went there, the I saw it, mm. even a uh, mm. uh, plantain, yeah. they brought it. What he did was yeah. bring your wares or your products. Mm. How yeah. many did you bring? This is the total. What is the cost? It's 50 naira. Take 25 naira. I paid you half. Subsidize. So sell okay. it for people at the rate of 25 naira. Subsidize it. And don't take it away from here. Yeah. Sell it here. Yeah. And you know, that ran for a day two. Mm, and people were coming in. From all over. Even uh, yeah. people yeah. who had products yeah. to sell were coming. And there were some people already seated. Buy everything when they bring it. Mm. Allow them, allow them to sell it here for our people. So it's not as if we subsidize, we take it away and go and make profit from it. Mm -hmm. So when I saw that in Oriya Legi, Oriya I said, some people are still thinking. Mm -hmm. These are the kind of leaders we want who will look at their people and say, how can we alleviate this, yes. this suffering? We all know that this is a time to make sacrifices. The president has made it very clear. And he has just shown an example by saying, look, I don't need and heavy delegation to go anywhere. No. Nigerians are making sacrifices. Let us also show them that we appreciate we are, it. We, and we are ready exactly. to be part of it. Yes. So that is the kind of thing. We should not see any state or place where you find food in warehouses. Being wasted. Mm. And you are telling us it is remnant. You are actually planning to, to dispose them. Mm. Ah. In All fact, right. the people who are responsible for this, it is there in the holy book that you don't waste food. Mm -hmm. They are going to get punished for this. Mm -hmm. Even by God. I mean, it's, 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 it's unfortunate. Governor should not let this just uh, slip by. Yeah, yeah. It will send the wrong signal. All right. We'll take this breather. We'll be right back after this time out. Please don't go away. From work, in the busy traffic, your car breaks down. Car horns blast. Your car is pushed aside. You call for help. Phone battery blinks and dies. You take a cab. Few miles, tire bursts. What a day. Frustrated, sweating, and tired. Nearing home. 
darkness envelops the street. Wow, just one house is bubbling with life. Brilliant lights, loud music, smiling wife, all welcome you. We alone have light. Yes, it's JRB Solar Energy Systems, my anniversary present to us. No matter how dark life is, the sun is gonna shine on everything you do. JRB Solar Inverters, Batteries, Solar Panels, Solar Street Lights and more. Telephone 0906 752 Email sales at jrbsolar.com. JRB, the sun is gonna shine on everything you do. Like many things in life, Making great music is a process. And a key part of that is the right data and the data that helps you understand what needs to be done and how to do it and what sound will connect with listeners. Bring it up, bring it up. Bring it up. Let's go everybody. Whatever aspect of life you're into, enjoy the journey. Nine Mobile's got you covered. Dial star 301 hash now. Nine Mobile. Thank you for still with us. If you're just joining us, this is Journalist Hangout, and we're reaching you from TVC News, yes, in our headquarters in Lagos, Nigeria. And I have online Kao Yigbili and Tari Udu Fawakon still in the house. Now, the menace of sit at home remains a big challenge for Southeast governors to contend with. In a number of states, several markets have been sealed by the State Market Amalgamated Traders Association for not opening for business on Monday and not participating in the sanitation as ordered by the state governments. The President General of the Association, Humphrey Anuna, and his team members expressed disappointments that the market did not open despite the directive by the state government that all markets should be opened on Monday. Monday, 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 yet to, you know, get back to the normal mm. uh, business Monday in the Southeast. After months or weeks or years of this um, sit at home. You see, as far as I'm concerned, it will take a while before the confidence of people is restored. So this idea of moving around, closing their shops, it's like putting the cart before the horse, if you allow that cliche. Why? What people need is that confidence that if I open my shop, nothing will happen to me. Some of those who, do, who are not opening their shop, it is not because they don't want to do business. It is not because they, uh, they align with iPod when iPod was saying so, although iPod has said no. That is no longer the issue. Right, they, should not, they should forget about it. It is not because they support not opening their shop. It is a, a, a way of exercising some caution that, look, if you open your shop, you might be attacked. So the government needs to restore that confidence in people that, look, we have made sure that your life and that of uh, your and your properties are safe. If you open your shop, you, nothing will happen to you. If you continue to close their shop, it is not that they are. I'm sure they are not happy. They are not government workers, so they know that if you don't open their, if you if you don't go, if you don't open your shop, there will be no market for you. So. Whether you open it or you don't open it, it is at your own loss and gain. If they were government workers, whether they go to work or not, they will get their pay. So in this situation, the government should rather than shutting down their shops, encourage them, let them see reason that, look, we have tried all our best, and if there are any sort of disturbance on that day, government will show them that we are ready to punish those who violate, who don't allow you, or who come and disturb you. So the government must, it is that confidence that people need. When you tell people that, oh, come and open your shop, nothing will happen to you. If they open it and something happens, who will bear the cost? Who is going to be responsible for that? 
So government should, rather than be shutting down their shop, government should find a way to restore their confidence. Because that is the most important thing. Larry, it's been months, years, that they started this exercise and, you know, the sit-at-home exercise and to bring them back, it will take extra effort. Yeah, true. And that's why we not support this uh, ceiling of markets and the punishing of uh, people who refuse to open shops. It's we counterproductive. Obviously, it will be. Uh, what uh, the government should do more is sensitize the people. This is something that has almost become a culture. I want you to know that the moment this Monday sit at home thing lingered, these people adjusted mm. everything. And they, the they, 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 are, they, they are acclimatized. Calendar, everything. Adjust their calendar, change their pattern, their programs, and they fitted in. Since government, no security agency could help them. Non state actors. Determine, uh, determine. The public holiday. They get Monday as a no work day. For so long, over a year, it lingered and the people already had adjusted to it. For you to bring them out and say, look, we can go back to normalcy, you have to ensure it is more of carrots than stick. Yeah. If you come with uh, cordials and arrows and hammers, you will not get their confidence mm -hmm. and you won't have their support. What do you do as a government who wants the people to... Accept the fact that we can live our lives without fearing some people. Allow those who are opening their shops and markets to, to thrive. Allow those who still stay at home to see that nothing happened. Exactly. To those who went to the who market on Monday. Monday. Yeah. Come forward with incentives hmm. for those who are courageous and cooperative enough to open their market. Oh, for coming today, this is what you gained. For not coming, ah, we lost what they gained without being punished. Gradually, more people, more people will, will come out to participate in my market activities. Mm. If government itself will encourage certain things to happen on Mondays, mm. to encourage those who are coming out, mm. then those who aren't coming out will move in. But if you begin to lock shops, it, 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 will, it will take you back to what you don't want. Because if more people stay at home, you will lock more shops. Mm. And more activities will be debarred. So it, it, is, it is not the way to go. Rather, orientation, sensitization, encouragement, security. These are the things government should pay attention to. If people feel that, yes, lives and properties are actually yeah. safe now, even on, on a Monday, anywhere in uh, uh, the Southeast, people will go to market. Recently, in uh, I know of Enugu, but I'm sure it happened in most states of the Southeast. Four members were decamped a week earlier than other states in the Southeast because somebody declared one week stay at home. And they didn't want that to meet four members yeah, four member. in the Southeast. Mm. So instead of spending three weeks or so, oh, they spent two weeks and they were asked oh, to go. What are their programs? What are their programs? So that is a federal government program. Uh -huh. so, so when people now you get afraid, you, you, you want to blame them? You can't blame them. We have seen people who were, who were shot right there in their shops. Yeah. So let us let them know that you can go and nothing will happen first. Let this run for some time. I think lately the military, uh, the 82 division? Is it, yeah, it, yeah. Uh, is it 81 or 82 division? The one the new, that is the one, the, yeah. Yeah. doing something, yeah. and they've been apprehending some of this. Um, uh, yeah, they apprehend them more. Hideouts, been, you know, that, that is a confidence booster. And also, I think, on those Mondays, uh, that are market days, if the government can uh, ask some of its own officials to also visit these markets, let people see them around. Let people see that, oh, uh, maybe the secretary to the government, of the, uh, to the state government, or the head of service and so on, that people come to the market, even if they don't have anything to buy, but at least you move around, with people, the confidence will be restored that, oh, okay, 
if government people can come out and come to these shops, then that means there is a normalcy is returning gradually. So the government itself must go out, and as that is said, this time it is carrot that must be used. You can't force somebody to open a shop. Okay, if you oh, if you if you shut his shop now and he comes next week and he says he was ill, he was in the hospital, mm. what will you do? There's nothing you can do. So it is because of the level of people not coming that we have noticed it. By the time things become normal now, it's just like the Yoruba will say, Ojo when you come, when you come, well. By the time things become normal now, whether you come on a Monday or you don't come, nobody will know. It is your pocket that will tell you. Because Monday is a very, very important day anywhere in the world. It's a first business day of the week. And people come from everywhere to buy things, to exchange goods and all, do all that. And then you now say that you will not allow people to go to their market on that day. The government needs to convince people that, look, Monday, uh, things have become normal. You don't have to uh, shut down your shop. You don't have to be away from your shop again. Come and open your shop and do your business as usual. Okay, moving on now. An African proverb says, when two brothers fight to death, strangers will inherit their property. This appears to be, the, to be playing out in a do state, South South Nigeria. The state government has disbanded the media crew attached to the office of the deputy governor, Philip Schreiber, with a directive to him to request the Ministry of Communication and Orientation for media coverage of activities of his, event, his office. The directive followed the incident that happened during the colloquium held to mark the 32nd anniversary of the creation of the state. Dari, we started this yesterday and um, another event happened yesterday and Philip Schreiber was stopped again from um, getting, entering the, this particular event. Can you just put up to speed? How did you get here? What is playing out in uh, Edo is discouraging and disappointing. Uh, when uh, state actors begin to use the powers of state to humiliate, push on, and they even threaten themselves, uh, they are telling the people that it is not only uh, to come and lead and serve that you have elected us, it's also to come and show how, how well we can use uh, power. That's the deputy governor making, yeah. making his um, exit. Exit. He's leaving. Uh, a, day, a, a day earlier, mm. he made his way in. He tried to exchange his entries with the governor. An ordinary security personnel blocked the deputy governor in full glare of cameras. You see, we are not making excuses for either of these two. You see, we have had this discussion, and some people begin to talk about uh, uh, some people are supporting either. Obaseki or Shuaibu. And I say, no. We are saying these two people will not be in, or will not be occupying those offices soon. Some other set of people will come. What will we say we have made of those offices? Dude. We are a security man. Can tell the deputy governor, you won't talk to the governor. And the governor will look up, see the exchange, and take his eye away from it. What examples are we? Vindictiveness insulting. How will that security man look at the deputy governor when he's just with him alone tomorrow? That's the man I stopped from irritating the governor. And then, he did, 24 hours later, he was not even allowed to be part of a state function. He was legitimately, he, he is legitimately elected to be part of that function. It is one of the reasons why he is the deputy governor. Anything could have happened there needing the deputy governor's uh, attention in case the governor is unable to. But he is not there. The governor will decide that any other person is so uh, wish will do it. <laughs> what is playing out between them? Somebody said, an elderly friend uh, said, Daddy, I saw your concern about Edo. And what I just want to tell you is, look, when two thieves 
go out. And after a successful looting loot. operation, <laughs> they come back. come back with their loot. Yeah. And then it is time to we'll share. share the loot. If by any error of commission or omission, they disagree on the sharing formula, he said the noise they will make will be louder than the noise they made while they were stealing. <laughs> because while they were stealing, they had to do it discreetly. But in this case, they will forget that these loots are products of criminality. <laughs> he said that's what is happening in Edo. And nobody should pity either Mr. A or, or Mr. B. B. Rather, we should pray for democracy in Edo. Because the aftermath of what is happening, he said, it can be, it can be very, very dangerous for the state. And I fear that too. I fear that. Obasaki told Edo people that he wanted to fight against Godfatherism four years ago. And now Philip Shoabu said he wants to become the governor. And Obasaki is saying that yet that the referee has not blown the whistle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is happening? You see, this issue is just the same thing that is occurring almost in every state. In the level of, of it and the, uh, playing it in the open may not be as open as it has been. If we look at Nigeria since 1999, when we returned to democracy, how many deputy governors have succeeded their uh, uh, governors uh, peacefully? We, had, uh, we have Ganduji, Ganduji in Kano. Yes. But we know what is happening between them now. But at least he succeeded his principal. The same thing in... Um, uh, um, Zamf no. Yerima was governor in Zamfara. But the, the succession was not peaceful. But Kafi succeeded him. Exactly. It, was it wasn't. So now you have a situation where a governor can you cannot be a governor without having a deputy. Neither can you be a deputy without having a governor. So the process of choosing your deputy is like you are a whisker away from being the governor. Yes. Anything can happen to the governor. And so in that situation, it is better not to choose an idiot to be your deputy. Because anything can happen and the idiot will become the governor. Now, what exactly, in, in the case of Edo now, you know what will be happening, especially in the camp of Osio Mole now. Uh, Shaibu is, I understand, is a cousin to Osho Mali. They are very close. He rebelled against his own blood cousin to support you. Now it is his turn. Well, whether he, you want him to succeed you or not, he shouldn't get to this point. Why should a deputy governor be barred from attending a state function? And then... This idea oh, oh, is it, it, almost everywhere. Eh? We have one state house, we have one this, and we have one that. It is the governor that approves All the appointment of those who are going to work with the deputy. The same way the president approves those who are going to work with the vice president. So if you find out that in, in such a situation, those who are working with the deputy governor now, whether they are guilty or not, by association, you have relieved them of their job. Mm. Just like that. I mean, there must be a better way to resolve this matter. And I think the elders of the party in the state should step in and bring this thing to a stop. I know uh, shortly before we uh, came into the studio, the deputy governor pledged his loyalty that, yes, is is loyal to the governor, but he still insists that he wants to to, to be the, the, to to run. There's nothing wrong in it. I mean, let everybody have a clear playing field. You said you are fighting against Godfatherism. Now you are there. The same system you fought against is the same system you want to begin to operate. Why is it? Why are we like this? Because in Nigeria now, people fight so-called godfatherism when it doesn't favor them. Immediately they get there, they also want to become 
another godfather. But Harry, at a point in time, it, when they were negotiating to, when they exited the All Progressive Congress, yes. then they came to uh, the PDP. You know, Governor Baseki stood his ground mm. against all odds that my deputy must come with me. Exactly. And my deputy must be my deputy. Ayo. He told the Dan Obi led ESCO that time that, look, oh, I will not change my deputy. I can consider every other thing to not do, the but not my deputy. I must come with my deputy. What, so what has changed? Anyway, thank God we were here during that period too. Mm. And I did say that anybody who sees uh, Obaseki's action at that time has been very loyal and uh, truthful to Raibu was making a mistake. Mm. It is playing out now. Mm. What he was doing there was in his own interest. There were two issues. Mm. He was to drop Shuaibu so that Obi's camp will produce his deputy. Okay. He didn't want to take that chance. Mm. He knew today, as we speak today, he's at Logarit with Obi. Obi, yes, till tomorrow. The, Obaseki is fighting on all fronts. Ah. So if he had agreed to that uh, proposition, he will have an obese man right, right behind him. Behind him. Mm. That was one thing he didn't want, and that's why he resisted. It was not because of his love for, for Shuaibu. Shuaibu. Secondly, he knew that on that ticket at that time, quote me anyway, on that ticket at that time, Shuaibu was the politician. Mm. Obaseki was a politician. Shuaibu was a man with the street. Mm. He was a man with the crowd. To the extent that Oba so, actually warned Shuaibu in the, uh, the peace meeting they had. Yes. He singled him out to warn him. Yes. That you are the one with the crowd. Mm. So the truth of the matter is that Obaseki had no structure. Mm. Shuaibu had a, a very formidable structure. Shuaibu had always been a politician. I recall that uh, he, he passed through... The, the, the ropes. The yeah. It was SUG, uh, student union, yeah. uh, in his university. Mm. He became a president of NANCE mm. and mm. called in taking office in Bauchi in uh, 2000 mm. after Moses Oseke they died. Mm. And he rose to be a le legislator, state legislator, federal. Also, also, Before I imagine, as he, 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 he was the politician on that ticket. So, for those two obvious reasons, Obaseki was not going to be convinced. To, he would have lost the election without Shuaibu on the ticket. Because Obi was going to give him somebody from Edo Central as his deputy. Okay. So, he, he understood so now, what he was. So, now that for. this uh, governor Obaseki, Obaseki is not contest. Obaseki wanted Shuaibu to run against Toshomole in Edo North in 2019. And Shuaibu said no. Yes. And that's the, the, you see, that's the problem. Where because he knew that it was going to be very difficult to that, run against Oshomole in Nedo North and defeat Oshomole in Nedo North. That is the thing now no that we have seen that it is his own interest that he's trying to protect. Trying because to now, how will you, a man that fought his own cousin, and went along with you all the way. I mean, so Oshio Male will be laughing now that uh, laughing. you see now. Laughing. You see, I told you, but. In fact, Oshio Male attended the function. It, and uh, the governor invited. The governor invited. him very well. The exchange presentry. Oh, 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 now but, you uh, are now. Uh, 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 right. Shaibu is now an outcast. Ah, uh, no, no. I think, but, but if you look at it, yes. if you really look at it, I don't think we should weep for my comrade. What is it? He's my comrade. He's <laughs> uh, my very uh, close friend. And uh, we keep uh, talking about these issues mm. all along. The truth of the matter is that I have a lot of respect for Shaibu in all that has happened. Even what happened between him and Shiomole. His arguments were, I am a sitting deputy governor. Yes. Who swore a note of allegiance to the state and the governor. Okay. Yes. So for okay. that, he Paul stayed with... Uh, from Ajibo in Ogun State. Yes. Thank you for joining us, Paul. Yes. Go ahead, please. Thank you very much, uh, Ayo. All right. The issue of uh, Edo, I don't know why you are so sympathetic to these two men. <laughs> in 1978, 
when a Shifawo or Shifawo said, I will know, there are two rebellious deputy governors then. Mm. I will know, the no cause there. He only said that they are finished politically. And where are they today? Mm. Even in their grave. So for me, it's like you are sympathizing with thieves. So for me, uh, you're about to enter about that. About the law. You don't talk with your, those who that have helped you. If a man uh, the, the, the denies his wife, he will pay for it. If you deny your employer, if you are disobedient, you will pay for it. So, that is my good friend. Please don't sympathize with them. <laughs> no, I, I agree with you. I, I, in fact, that's exactly what I was going to say that. If Shuaibu's argument then was, I, I, I opposed Shemole because. I swore to be loyal to My, Obaseki. Yeah. I think he should take the same stand now. He's still a sitting deputy governor. Yeah, Obaseki is still his boss. No, this afternoon is actually now. But, no, but it, that does not mean he's now. Oh, no. Uh, uh, no, Obaseki, is saying, I, Obaseki is saying it's too early uh, to start campaigning. Yes. And Shaibu is saying, no. I want to By campaign. Time, I want to campaign. It will By be too late. It's November. That you say you will choose, you decide who is going to be the. Uh, it, will, it might be late. It, it will be too late. Why, that's the argument. Why is he saying it's too late now? When Oshio uh, Shomole was saying Obasegi was doing this wrong, he was doing this wrong. He said, "Look, I swore loyalty to this man. I think that allegiance should be enough today for him to just accept whatever Obasegi." And what? No, but wait. Uh, what uh, the thing? I am only saying this based on Ari, what he said before. Ari, Ari, but Ari, the whole thing that got interesting when Oshomole now came out that. APC is not. It's not a, a refugee, a refugee camp. camp. No, but you see, it's not a refugee camp. Why should that means Shwebu is in? He should stay where. No, he should stay where he is. So why should governors decide that their deputy should not step into their shoes? I say I decide. If there is anything they've seen that we didn't, we have we haven't seen because the issue let, is. Let, in let the, me ask this question: okay. Why why should? Obaseke had decided then that he will run with no one else but Oshiyama eh, and yeah, But you said it uh, earlier that the, the Shuaibu is the... Yeah, but nobody blamed him for taking that decision. If he's not saying, look, Shuaibu, you, you are good as deputy. That was what he said then. Uh -huh. Very good. But he's saying now that you are not good as governor. I mean, if we respected his opinion then, I said, ah, see a good man taking a good decision for his deputy. Why are we, like uh, the last week I said, why are we having a uh, hunchback no. over his decision now? Well, the open crisis between the deputy, the governor and the deputy Look, governor is... Tribal but the like, boards himself to a corner. He boards him. Tribal, so he shouldn't have supported... No, then, at that time, I will recall that they said that one man who can reconcile, who could have reconciled or she only, and the person was tribal. I'm telling you, I see he he, he 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 had all it takes then, but I think he looked critically at his uh, political future, mm. did some permutations, mm. and pitched his tent. If it had paid off, mm. he would be enjoying it now. So if it is not paying off now, he gambled. He gambled and he has to cash out either positively or negatively. To play the Godfather now. Oh, you know, oh. That, you know that you know that is well, my that is my own grouse with it. You you defeated uh, a, a, a godfather. And you now install yourself. But what do you expect him to do? To walk away and leave the field? Uh, no. He no, only that's defeated that's, the godfather well, so that that's he can right, be a godfather. That's why politicians. Was, that's why uh, politicians. I don't know the Lagos. No, I don't. It's said Lagos now. <laughs> that's why you can never understand with politicians. <laughs> <laughs> that his, his fight was against a godfather. Standing in his way mm. for, to become a godfather. <laughs> That's simple as that. That will do for our Thank you. Thank you. Anyway. Online car, you believe. <laughs> for your contribution. Thank you. And that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. You can watch the repeat broadcast of this episode at 11 p.m. tonight. And join us this Sunday from 1.30 to 3.30 for Journalist Hangout on Sunday on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News. Nigeria. I'm Ayodele Uzuba. See you tomorrow and God bless Nigeria.